based on the champions that they get. You know, whether it's Darshan tanking uh, Krug damage to make the enemy team guess where the jungler is, or Smithy tracking down for very early scuttle crabs, or ghosting into the bottom lane to burn summoners very early. These plans for CLG in the first five minutes have gotten them a ton of advantages in their wins. Yeah, CLG has definitely had one of the strongest early games in thanks to their planning. But we're talking so much about what CLG will do to adapt to ANX, but it's a two-way street. That was an incredibly close game they played before Albus Knox was able to sneak the Baron, and they have to adapt on the other side towards CLG. When they played, Aurelian Soul had been disabled, so that's a new ban Albus Knox had to throw in there. And of course, taking a look through the rest really quickly, CLG, Brandon, Nivia, Nidalee, Caitlyn, Olaf, Aurelian Soul, and Ania, Instalock, Siva for a miracle. I do like the Anivia ban from CLG. That is one of those adaptations you're talking about uh, because it is one of the champions Kira is known for, and they do kind of want to put Smurf on one of those tanky champions like Poppy, so high probability of that coming out. The Sivir is a good pickup, though, because a miracle has been kind of left and been the one they sacrifice as far as CS. Now he'll be able to bring the speed to the team. Yeah, and an early Jace Whoa. pick by CLG can go to Darshan or to who he all the way back when he was Zion Spartan. He had some tremendous Jace games, so he's always known to play that champion. And with two jungle bands, I really love the early Elise. Also, coming into Worlds, tracking the pros accounts for solo queue in Korea and back over in North America, Jace was one of Darshan's most played champions. And I was expecting, you know, CLG maybe to have some more uh, variation in their team comps. They have been just putting him on tank after tank after tank. Maybe this is the time they do push him to damage, but as you said, very flexible pick, who he could play it as well. All right, so we're anticipating potentially Darshan's hands, but no, the alternate is available. Where does Steos and the rest of Albus Knox set their sights? We know Smurf had a great poppy game. That's now been locked in, and Steos will certainly be running the graves in the jungle. So there's a lot of physical damage on the side of Albus Knox. With a kind of non-ganking jungler there and a poppy match up top, uh, I think the Jace does look pretty decent up top so far, but COG should save their mid pick until they see the entire lineup of Annex before locking in mid. Uh, I think they need to save that flexibility at the moment and lock in their duo lane bottom. And I think they can still pick a pretty versatile bot lane here. They had a lot of success with the Ezreal in their first game, and you wonder if they're gonna go with the Bard, the Alistair, the Nami. What type of lane do they want? Do they want hard initiation from Alistair, or do they want a little bit more sustain in the lane and a little bit more safety with the Nami? Especially if they want to keep the probability or the possibility of this Jace top alive, I think a bottom lane, you know, semi-tank support, a melee support for Afro move Ooh. would be huge, but they're not going to do it. So Karma locked in. And again, we add more flexibility yep. because they could still, you know, have who he play Karma mid and lock in a melee support for tank. That's exactly it. They could have a wicked poke comps right here, but then they're still going to have to make sure they can't get hard initiated on by Albus Knox Luna. Albus Knox, while they have a lot of physical damage, doesn't have much hard initiation. The question will be whether they can find it with these next two picks. Tom Kench is available for the crits if he wants to deliver a poppy to the back line, if a teleport ward isn't available. What else are options here for Albus Knox? Because they're looking for their two, so, uh, sorry, mid laner and support. I think they're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place right here because if it is a poke comp, they're going to want hard initiation with something like an Alistair. But then if you try and play Alistair Sivir against a Lucian Karma lane, you're going to get wrecked in that regard. So they have to find a way to not get completely smashed in lane while still having an answer to a poke composition, which is difficult. And that question seems to be some heal and some zoning from Bard, as well as wave clear from Victor. And Bard can definitely do that because if you have a good tempered fate, then a Sivir speed boosted Poppy can get into position where you can angle yourself against the wall when they're going to come out for it. Now, saying that theoretically is all good and well. However, it's very hard to actually pull off in-game. That's a There's a high technical level that you need there. And the the bard from Lacrit actually was fairly lackluster as far as the Tempered Fates went. And this is going to require a high level of, of execution from them. Yeah, I still think, though, based on the situation, those are exactly the right picks. Maybe you could have seen the Nivea to aid the uh, initiation a little bit because they could have had the Poppy Nivea once well, again. Well, it's banned the, out, so the victory is still pretty that. good. Uh, yep, that's, <laughs> that's the way it works. Makes them the right picks, <laughs> as I was saying. <laughs> All right, so CLG, how do they decide to lock this in? If we anticipate Carmelution bottom. Well, I would really love to see Aphromoo on a Playmaker because, you know, that was one of the biggest things uh, for me for CLG in their huge victory was not only the roaming of Huhi, but also Aphromoo on the Alistar. Get 100% kill participation pre-15 minutes, but they're going with him on the Nami, and this is going to be 
You talk about, you know, level of execution. This is a very flimsy team, and you need to land your skill shots, you need to land your poke, and have to be ready for the disengage. Yeah, that being said, they do have speed and heals from both Karma and Nami to do that. Definitely uh, gonna be worried about that lack of front line, though. It does attack the duo lane a little bit. They already have the Nami buffing up the Lucian, and mid lane Karma does make Sticks a very difficult to kill. And if he does fall down, they still have a very high DPS guy who could benefit from shields in Jace as well. So those are the synergies CLG is working around. But like you say, it's a flimsy composition. Very offensive here from CLG. And I think you, it's a good point you mentioned. It does require them, you know, using that offense fairly early. And I'm going to have to watch Smithy because a lot of these lanes for CLG are going to want to bully early on to try and snowball that. And then they can transition into sieging and getting their poke going. But Smithy on the Elise is going to have to protect that aggression. And he'll have to change up what he's done from week one to week two, because last week, Smithy was hanging around Stixate a lot more than anybody else. You guys can see the team comps on your screen. You know what to do. Jump onto Twitter and cheer for hashtag ANX win or hashtag CLG win. And let us know who's going to be tying up with the Rocks Tigers for sole control of first place for later in the day. Hold it, it's the sixth man in San Francisco. They are behind the North American squad of CLG. Definitely support for CLG. And we have to mention still how tight this group is at the top. With G2 losing another game, nothing has really been solved yet. There's still a chance for a three-way tie at four and two. Yeah, these teams are tied right now. And Albus Knox Luna have acquired a lot of international fans recently. They are poised to be the most successful wildcard team ever. If they win just one more game this week, they will have the most wins that we've ever seen from a wildcard team. And if they own the head-to-head -head over CLG, that could be a, that could be what decides it, who he sniffs it out. <laughs> oh, the yeah. tension. You're, the tension. You are the most tense one up here right now. <laughs> to be fair, Kobe, Quickshot and I cast both of the first victory wins for the wildcard teams. We saw INTZ beat EDG, and the first time ANX was victorious. So Quickshot's ready for stuff to happen. I, I am. and. You know, I was, I was getting to the point we touched on earlier. Having a 2-0 head-to-head when you're that hotly contested at the top of the table could determine whether or not ANX advance. Doshan, no real threat here. He's going to back away. Gets a really quality ward in, though, to scout out the jungle start from Steos. It actually is very important because, as we said, Smithy on the Elise, level three, full kit, ready, ready to create pressure anywhere on the map, especially with these bullying lanes, whereas Graves, generally want to, wants to farm a lot more early on. And if Smithy doesn't make the same mistake that Peanut made when they were play, playing Albus Knox in the same matchup, you know, face check the Graves and then fight him in the jungle, then he should be able to try and control the map for the early stages. Yeah, and they get to see Stehos right at the start here. I think moves like that speak to a CLG mindset where they're always going to try and take an advantage when it's there. I think from a macro perspective, a lot of times when people would play against wildcard teams in the past, they would almost play overly passive because there is this expectation that the way you lose is you kind of get cheesed and you want to just make sure you neutralize the game because you're better than them. That's no longer the way teams can look at Albus Knox Luna. So when COG see three people on Albus Knox at the bottom side of the map at level one, Darshan immediately goes in to get the next ward, even though it's a slightly risky play, because that's what they need to do to advance their victory. So I expect a more aggressive COG this game than the first time they played. Definitely true. You see Stix A miss a CS down bottom and then go back up to the top side. The way that Darshan would want to play that matchup. Meanwhile, never mind. Down bottom here, the bullying. They actually want to play it similar in a similar fashion. Uh, the Jace wants to abuse his range, get into the bush so that you drop aggro from the range minions. Uh, bottom lane doing the same. Darshan going aggressive here. Goes into hammer form to the skies, drops down the charge. So Steho is actually going for an early Graves gank, which you don't expect at all, and for good reason. Uh, you see there, he, ha he doesn't have any CC to bring to the table. You know, Kira is on Victor. There's no way they're setting up you know, any sort of meaningful play onto Huhi, and all he really did there was reveal himself. Yeah. That's one of those things where you give away a little bit of unnecessary information as a jungler, and you can only do that so many times before Smithy really is able to punish you. Uh, honestly, though, you know, Smithy had also skipped his red, and there was a slight opportunity there for uh, Annex to punish, but you wouldn't really expect that to be there, so. And Miracle and Lecrit really fighting for CS down bottom. 8 to 17. Yes, there was a big wave in front of America. They can't afford to give up too many. Is constantly being pushed by Stixa and Afro. And now is underneath the tower as well. Afro Moon and Stixa are going to get some chip damage. 
first of the towers for now. Yeah, they're going to have to be relatively careful when they're pushing up that lane, but with that being said, Graves' gank isn't the most lethal one unless Bard can land dream stuns on them. Ooh, a little bit of a stun, but That's no mana to follow up. And remember, this does bring me back to Champion Select, where they talk about the way this Jace matchup wants to play against Poppy. Bully about about. Dive. Stayos is That's here, risky. This is a pin into the wall. Expert is in trouble. He flashes away with his life, lands a good defensive cocoon, but blows his own summoner spell on a dive. In that, the only positive there for CLG is that they did deny a couple of CS, because if Smurf was able to CS uh, kind of freely there, he would have caught right back up to even against Darshan. And now, you know, Darshan is kind of milking this very slight uh, CS lead that he does have against him, but he's lost control of the wave and he might have to teleport back to uh, the lane. Yeah, and I think it was great instincts from Steo. CLG's lucky to get out of that one alive. All of it was pretty much fog of war as far as the approach on those ganks. So Smithy was hoping that Steos wasn't there, but he really didn't know. And that's exactly how you want to play the Graves matchup. Uh, you know, get the counter ganks and the farm advantage. Stehos intelligently immediately moves over to CLG territory. We saw him there on the screen, stealing away the Raptors. Uh, even though who he got a ward over, nothing he can do. He's out of mana. And Grave takes his uh, small tax for that overextension. And already before five minutes, Xmithy has attempted a tower dive in the top lane, in Darshan's lane when Darshan's running his first sort of carry champion of Worlds 2016. Um, two Poppy games and a Gnar under his belt. The team style that we saw for CLG from week one to week two is now very different in this pick and ban, and there's a lot more reliance on Darshan to show up. Yeah, CLG definitely pivot their strategy a little bit, not having Huhi on something like Syndra, who they're trying to dominate the lane with. This is very much a side lane focused CLG team. They're expecting to win with the Lucian and Nami without jungle assistance. And if they get Darshan assistance in the top lane, that's their plan to have two of three winning lanes with a high gold support in the mid lane, is what CLG would want to have. Seems to be the case for now. Plus eight CS sticks and Afro again, shoving in a Miracle. A miracle and Lecrit having a very difficult time. And for Lecrit, he's going to step up with those tempered fates. Stixay is missing quite a bit of CS that are just sort of sitting there, right? And not really picking up the gold that's on the ground though, so not punishing as heavily as they possibly could if you're expecting, you know, perfect play All right up here on stage, which is rarely the case. Smithy, though, getting that deep vision down for the bottom side as well. You talk about protecting those side lanes, allowing them to play up and play aggressive. That is one of the key moments there as Smithy does get some of that deep vision. They can track the Stehos. Currently at the Grom, uh, up in the top half of the map. Both Darshan and Smurf, they backed away. They've used their teleport to lane. Recalled again, picked up a few more items, still even on CS. Really across the board, small advantage for Steos versus small advantage for Stixe. But nothing to write home about and nothing super chaotic in this early game yet. So this is pretty good for CLG because their team comp will come alive in the next sort of 10 or so minutes. And there's a chance we see a really low kill game throughout the mid game and maybe even towards the late game just because of the complete lack of hard initiation on CLG and the fact that Albus Knox is going to be struggling to initiate on CLG as well. As far as the farming goes, it's really all about trying to keep pace if you're Albus Knox right now. Definitely true. And since people haven't seen you know, a, a tremendous amount of poke comps or a tremendous amount of siege comps recently, it looks like it's a... Hit there with the binding. Uh, we are going to see this game really start to unfold when we transition in the next few minutes afterwards towards killing the turrets. You know, after one of these la lanes that CLG have that are pushing starts to whittle down the turret, then they can start to you know bring in the extra range champions, group up, go for the siege, and you try and snowball the the outer turret lead. That's where you really build momentum in these matchups. Meanwhile, as you mentioned for A and X, they want those flanks from Smurf and the Tempered Fates to hit from Lacrit. Confidence then for Albus Knox. They have to find those abilities, find those opportunities, and start with some visions. Oh. oh, flash away from Afro. Didn't quite see how that one built up. Can only imagine it was a stun. Smurfs is looking for a fight into Darshan. Actually going to come away way worse for wear. Picks up the Buckler. It's action all over the map. Who he's running away from the Chaos Storm. The Death Ray won't kill him, though. Flashes up and available. And looking at it, summoner spells, only Afros was used. Yeah, and CLG seems like they're trying to apply a lot of pressure, but Albus Knox is fighting back in a pretty big way. CLG has the map position, but they don't have the health bars. They're just getting hit as they're walking in, and it's, it's hard to gain an advantage that way. 
Afro definitely has to play very careful now. He's squishy on Nami. Stixay, though, dealing a lot with that calling. Yes, Theos. Yes, Theos. Where's the Tempered Fate? He's caught himself. He has no a flash fish. either. Afro moves the target. No flash. Too early on the light binding. Oh. End of the line. And Lecrit takes down Afro. Great punish there from ANXN. With all the pressure on for Lecrit. He lands the Tempered Fate. There's the playmaking. They're able to find that first blood. Total overaggression from COG. Aphromoo stayed up there without Flash. He did have the ability to dodge the Bard ultimate. And then Xsmithy also wasn't there in case of a 3v3. You would expect them to only stay pushed up if they have the Elise. But they had the wave in a spot. They thought they'd be getting the harass. I think they were trying to make sure they shoved it in so it could bounce it. And that's exactly when Albus Knox arrives. Great instincts. Cutting down Afro. There we go, playing around Lacrit. Steos comes in, waits for the spells to land. It does, and that was yeah. a lane that CLG was winning. Now they're behind. And it's the second time Steos has been to a wave at exactly the right time. So much of jungling isn't just about pathing, it's about understanding where your team's minion waves are and lending support at exactly the right moment. He stuffed the gank in the top lane, nearly got first blood then. Waits until CLG is greeting a minion wave into the turret, gets the first kill. <laughs> What the heck? And I mean, he wants that he wants that wave of minions. He just committed the teleport. He could have canceled it, obviously, and then just decided to walk, but commits his flash as well for that wave of minions. So Lucrit or Steos, if they decide to roam up and punish Huhi without flash, that could be a way for Albus Knox to get another kill on the board. That's the thing, you know, Jad just talked about, you know, informing your jungler of the minion waves, but also uh, informing them that Aphromu had just had his flash blown and in a lane with a bard. You have to respect the ultimate. Didn't happen, and that meant Afro went down. Kira takes a big chunk of damage, despite who he sort of teleporting in and wasting his flash. Ooh, Look at the control now. Be careful about running into Fog of War, though. Chasing into an Elise. Oh, yeah, but who he's going without Elise. Oh, he, he misses. Who he's down. Stales is looking for more. Lecrit joins the fight. Tempered fights up in a second. But Smith is hugging the tower. Light binding goes wide. And Albus Knox, 2-0 in kills! Yeah, we mentioned it, Champ Select 2. COG is going to have to land their skill shots, but they also have to have numbers advantages if they're going to go for play. Yeah, Hui just runs straight into the lane rather than trying to run to the jungler and run away. And they give up another kill. This is Albus Knox, Luna, taking a big early advantage. Even though they see the Bard coming, that was very risky and punished Prairie Click very quickly there. Yeah. And when you see the Bard coming, you have to make the quick pivot. Monitoring the Q on Huhi instead of monitoring one of his defensive abilities and making the retreat. Yeah. Cost him his life. Definitely have to go full defensive in that scenario. Because that Lacrit roam actually up from bottom was very, very important there. Landed the last Tempered Fade on a flashless target. Another flash with targets still available. Uh, Moby Boots for Lacrit. Got Tempered Fate available as well. Albus knocks a thousand gold up at 11 minutes 50, and you hear this time and time again. If a poke comp falls behind, it's yep. cataclysmically difficult to come back into the game. And remember, both of those small advantages were earned in lane first. You no, know, by the duo lane down bottom, blowing Aphromoo's flash, and then in the mid lane with Uhi continuing to channel his teleport and then flashing so he could grab the minions. There's one thing that is working for CLG. Stick says still farming up a storm. Um, yeah. What's that? Plus 25 CS if math is okay. Lacrit's looking for something, but Stick say dashes away. Yeah, but with that being said, Lacrit, first on the roam, oftentimes in this lane. They were able to punish Aphromoo for being pushed up so far. And CLG doesn't have a huge amount of playmaking opportunities. So really, Albus Knox should continue to farm. And Steos is just really arriving at the right time to all these waves. Oh, Stixay, he gets exhausted with Boomerang. Stixay's running for his life. Tempered fate. Look for the target to hit. Oh! Stixay's down! A miracle and Lacrit take them out! Afro's the target. He goes golden. Lacrit's not going to find the stun this time round. Flash for flash. <laughs> Teleport came down from Doshan. He's coming in from the river. Afro's looking to chase. The tidal wave's thrown out, but Kira's going to look to interrupt. Now there's a three on three. Lacrit in helps the race of the dragon. Not going to work out. Darshan's pinned against the wall. No teleport for Smurf. It's not available. They traded one for one. Darshan's down. Kira will go shortly. They end up trading a one for two in favor of CLG. Very, very chaotic scattering down there around bottom. But remember, once again, it started out with some overaggression from CLG's bottom lane. Stixe getting caught by the Cosmic Binding before the Flash. So once that tags him, 
it registers the wall behind him already, yep. and he's still stunned when he goes over. Right, right there. This. Once it tags, you're stunned. Quarter Immediately follow up there. On the dash there and flash from Stixay, and they were trying so hard to push this advantage, they end up trading two for two after the teleport gets used in. Right. The Annex bottom lane, they see the teleport in the bush, so they immediately go for the magical journey up towards the river to their mid laner. Uh, and Darshan has to go really deep there. He actually traded his flash for that as well. Kira going to be able to get the exchange kill on the way out with Victor. And still you do clean it up. But this game going very rough for them in the early stages. And I, I want to give us some praise to how quick Lakritz and America were to flash away and then yeah. jump in that um, uh, magical journey. They, they knew the threats of Darshan, tried to get out alive. CLG straight up outplayed them. So, even Stevens, like Smithy's in trouble, repels up, tries to get away. Kira didn't have his Chaos Storm, otherwise that would have been a squash spider. Instead has to back away. Yeah, and CLG still trying to push into Albus Knox and getting repeatedly punished. Oh, not stolen, Kira gets a good attempt though. Yeah, very good attempt, but the patience to pull it into the brush, wait for the burst to hit from CLG and then secure knowing that COD was going to be taking blind shots in with very high damage abilities. They welcomed the assistance on the blue buff kill. There we go. Welcome the assistance. Uh, gentle love tap. And this bottom lane is actually incredibly close in gold, despite how much the CS difference would say otherwise, because of the kills that they've been able to get on this team. Dashing in over the back, they're going to get an Ocean Drake too, which will only assist their laning phase and is great to have against a poke comp. No contest at all from CLG. A miracle and crit, they cut off the route for the bottom lane. Take a glimpse mid. Um, no, gonna cut top instead as Darshan's being bullied. Support's coming in from Smithy and Smurf, I think. He's sticking around way too long. Flashes up, and the Keeper's Verdict. Cocoon in his face, this should come down. No, nope, baited it out. Spidey senses tingling. Yeah, Smurf definitely does. Ooh, actually, Akron was caught. And he oh. hit. Oh, very good bubble. Doesn't matter, though. 2-1-1. One, and one. And what's Lecrit doing taking that kill? He was dead to rights without a flash, and Stalos just had to come out of the stasis. But nope, 2-1-1 one, one on the crit. He is a support carry, remember? Stalos looking for more. No tempered fade. End of the line bounces. Stick stays being run down by Stalos on that red buff. This might even be Tower First Blood, in fact. Catch a quick glimpse. Chaos Storm chasing Huhi away. And Stayos and Lecrit pulling that minion wave backwards to allow a miracle to push up and extend this gold lead even further. It's one and a half thousand and two towers under pressure. Yeah, this does get risky for CLG as they want to defend this turret, but they just don't have the manpower. They're calling down Smithy to try and even the numbers, but it's so late here. Turret extremely low. Tower's not going to fall, though. Stayos takes a lot of damage and he's forced away. While that's up, Albert Knox are winning every single lane. Kira's in trouble by Huhi. And who's going to continue to push him away? Get those mantra cues over and over. But as it stands, the CIS are going toe to toe with the North American LCS for the second time. And this game could get out of hand pretty quickly if they're able to get the bot, mid, and top lane turrets in quick succession. They have the Ocean Drake to enhance their laning phase. First turret blood up to Smurf. This is very impressive by Albus Knox. For the third time in four games, Albus Knox have secured first blood, first tower, and first dragon. And here's the thing, we could talk about, hey, they surprised people with Brandon and Ivia, or they snuck Baron, but this is as conventional as they come. Their team composition is full of meta picks, and they're just winning lanes and timing their ganks properly. If they win this, at least the first 17 minutes of this, has been the most impressive game Albus Knox has played yet at Worlds. Great punishes over and over on the CLG aggression from Albus Knox Luna. They are making them pay for trying to have these winning lanes. I have to go all the way back to pick some bands. CLG opted into the strategy. The games that CLG won last week were Wizards. The tank up top, it was in our pregame. The style that CLG was playing. This is not that style. And it's put them in a 2,000 gold deficit as we're approaching 20 minutes. Vision is going to be incredibly important as we move towards the mid game. With all the towers falling for CLG, that opens up more space for Smurf to get into the Fog of War, go for a flank, for these Bard Temper Fates to pick people off. CLG are losing a lot of defenses with the extra gold they're giving away uh, as the turrets start to go down. They are falling relatively quickly. Doshan Smurf trading back and forth at Hammer Form from Doshan. 
Giving a bit of damage to Smurf. And again, action, multiple lanes at the same time. Kira's gonna sidestep, puts a Chaos Storm. Who he's running to support Kira. He might chase, but there's a good ping ward in the river bush, and he's gonna back away. Looking at the mini-map, the crit's coming up. They could look for a target, but no Chaos Storm, so not likely just yet. Yeah, still just solid mid lane pressure from Kira. He pushes who he in a little bit, gets the wave to the turret, also draws a jungler up, and yes, it costs his ultimate in his ghost, but he still has flash, and the pressure can continue for Albus Nox as far as the mid lane and the bottom lane pushes are concerned. Very deep wards in the red buff jungle of Council Logic Gaming. Pink and invisible ward from Albus Nox. That's one avenue for Smurf to get in from behind. Um, and they're going to start themselves with the Rift Herald just before it goes down. Not a huge amount of priority on the Rift Herald here at Worlds. Yeah, this is only the fifth Rift Herald we've seen in now our 26th game, but that's going to be huge for Smurf up top against Garshan. Exactly, because he wants to try and split up on the opposite side and then just make CLG worry about wards that are behind them. When CLG group up and they try and take advantage of their synergies, you know, going for the poke and the siege at turrets, they're going to have to always worry about clearing wards behind them, having pink wards on their flanks, because uh, this Poppy, especially with Rift Herald, is going to be off on the side and is going to be a threat to come in. All right, who he's used to teleport. No threat from that one for now. Uh, we just hit 20 minutes. Arden's sensor picked up. He's still defending that mid lane tower. Smithy. I think he smited that one away. Yeah, he got the big one, but the small ones all go over two graves there. Steos will be happy with that trade. Looking at CS number six, they continues to accelerate ahead, uh, approaching 40 CS, but that's just going to counterbalance the tower and kill and assist goal. That's a miracle drop. Exactly, and if CLG wants to win this game, Stix is going to have to get a lot of the kills just because so much of their team composition is channeled towards making Stix a more powerful. Who he has gone, the ultimate support karma, Arden Sensor. Athene's Unholy Grail to the Ghostblade Stixie. He really needs to pick up some kills if they want to have any chance in these team fights. And I'm even going to hazard to say they'd also have to pick off Kira because Kira is going to kill Stixie at this point of the game with the items he has. So really, CLG need a lot to go right to come back in this. And that was the expectation of the team comp. Um, you know, flimsy, no real front line. Need to get some of that poke down. And Darshan's going to look to set up around objective Stixie. Gonna continue to pressure this tower. Um, chunked a miracle down, but a miracle's got a bunch of those caretaker shrines, and that's allowed him to top off his HP. And once again, Sehos is on the bottom side of the map where they're expecting the extra pressure to come from. As CLG pushes up, they bring X Smithy in. Cocoon connects, but no one to follow up. X Smithy just looking to help pressure this bottom lane. Now Stehos is coming to party, moving through the jungle, and it's a Cloud Drake next. This could benefit both teams to help counter their opponent's team composition strengths. But no real uh, safe opportunity to take it yet. Yeah, and COG with the 3,000 gold deficit and the Rylai's Crystal Scepter being completed on Kira, not to mention the Iceborne Gauntlet on Smurf. The item breakpoints are so heavily in the favor of Albus Knox right now. They're actually going for a play mid. Well, not going to work out. Who he's going to be able to accelerate away. We jump up top, Smurf. He's looking to challenge. He's gone toe-to-toe. -to -toe. There's a minion line, though. Smurf is going to taxi away. Rashawn's looking for a shot boss. We jump back to the river. Tidal wave's been used. Afro and Stixo running. Look at the death ray. Lift oh. up the back line. Collateral damage takes out Stixie. Kira's not not done. Siphon power, sidestep cocoon. He eats a volatile spidling, but that won't matter. Stayos looking for more. Flash for flash, but that's good because it's mid for support. The crit's the target. That's going to help who he HP wise, but that's another kill to Elvis Knox. A and X are actually tearing CLG apart right now. Victories across the map. They're going to get another objective in the Drake. They also get another one of those outer turrets to fall, like we talked about, opening up more of the map for them. They are setting themselves up very well to take this. That flash from Kira to land oh. the laser gets the Rylai slow. And even after Stixay flashes, Stehos covers the ground. Yeah, the ultimate there from Stehos, just the icing on the cake when they know who they have to kill as well. It's so obvious with this CLG composition. And Albus Knox is surgical in the way they're doing this to CLG, actually. It definitely feels like everyone on CLG is playing like they have to carry the game. You look at the way Darshan is trading in the top lane, burning a flash in a 1v1 when he doesn't even really have a chance to kill, or Stixie and Aphromoo losing Stixie because they're sticking around with 25% health in the lane. All of these things are backfiring, and Albus Knox is the team that's playing cool, that's playing the proper way right now. All right, there's the exchange where Smithy bought up. 
it off way too much. And here you can see the slow lands. So Stay Host fires the ultimate, still explodes because it hit the max range there. And it explodes in a giant cone. So the edge of the cone did tag stick say, even though he flashed further, finds the kill. Well, gold deficit is gigantic. 5,000. Albus Nox Luna came into this game saying that they were looking for, they were looking, they have the ability to play macro. They have the individual ability, mechanically, to match everybody in their group so far. And they might tie their record with the Rocks Tigers at the top of the group. Yep. They catch Uhi. out. Pin onto Afro move. Afro's down. Uhi gets knocked up into the air. He's exhausted. Albus Knox have comboed everything perfectly. Lecrit gets another. They take another tower. And now it's Smithy's the target. Chaos Storm's gonna run him down. It's Smithy. Oh! He's Albus Knox. Nine kills to two and they're peeling back for Baron. And there's such clean plays by Albus Knox Luna. Uhi's sitting at the turret. They're bard ulting, they're killing Aphromoo. Wow, they have who he caught in stasis and they turn immediately on a Baron. They're gonna get another pre-25 minute Baron, but it's not gonna be because they have to sneak it unless Darshan can somehow pull off a miracle. Shock Blast, Acceleration Gate, that's what Darshan needs to do. There's a couple of abilities over the wall. Albus Knox, they've got Vision, Smurf. Not gonna go just yet, Earth they've stopped the Baron. Gotta look to burst it, blocked off. Not gonna work out, Baron to Albus Knox at 25 minutes. Just straight up steamrolling CLG this game. They are so far ahead now. The Baron opens up their extra sieging from them. They can break tier twos now. This is so impressive from Albus Knox right now. And yes, it definitely feels like CLG is not playing with the knowledge of their giant deficit. They shouldn't be defending this turret. They didn't have the proper vision control, and Albus Knox rotated five people here, and CLG wasn't even close. Then, CLG kind of meanders in. Like, what is x really hoping to accomplish against five people taking the short way around and then flashing over the wall? Yes, Albus Knox is absolutely crushing them, but CLG is walking into them over and over again. And then falling and dying and giving up everything to Albus Knox. This could be a historic win for the LCL. Albus Knox put themselves into a very good position to get out of the groups if they can take this victory. Exactly, because remember, this game would give them a 2-0 lead over CLG. There is still the possibility of a three-way tie in 4-2, but that would require, assuming a CLG is to lose this game, that would require CLG to beat Rocks and also G2. It would also require everyone to beat G2 because they'd have to stay at 0-6. If any of the other things happen, Albus Knox would be able to at least get a tiebreaker with the third win. TLDR, they're in a fantastic position <laughs> if they win this game. They will have secured more wins at a World Championship than any wildcard team before. Last year, Payne picked up two. Albus Knox Look to go three wins, one loss. Only Rox Tigers able to take them down here in group A. Cocoon onto Steos is good, but very big shield from the locket. Kira gets rooted down. No, he forces the flash. Tower's gonna fall on the first attempt. CLG unable to do anything. Big chunk of damage onto A Miracle as he's gonna sidestep the gravity field. Next target's the inhibitor. And Albus Knox gonna back away because Smurf is pushing the top lane and the rest of the team's peeling for mid. Yeah, and CLG just has such pathetic damage at this stage of the game. They had to get Last Whisper as a second item on Darshan's Jace. They have a fully supportive Karma and they're also 10,000 gold behind. So really, Albus Knox is just running in circles right now. Bar ultimate lands, they go in. Tempered Fate catches Aphromoo. They're gonna take him down. Turn the attention over to the tower. Chaos Storm is ripping through Counter Logic Gaming. And Albus Knox, they've turned their attention onto the inhibitor turret. Looking at the objective, trying to put pressure down. No one from CLG can defend. And it's pressure on multiple lanes. Albus Knox, open up the base. Another tower down. An inhibitor falls. And Albus Knox, they're gonna take even more. The top lane's falling. The rest of CLG, they're looking to get one back. Here is the target. CLG still haven't killed him. Lecrit's gonna sidestep the bubble. Aqua Prison not gonna lock him down. Darshan flashes forward. Keeper's verdict will slow down the rest of the engage. Two inhibitors for only Lecrit. Two inhibitors and 13,000 gold ahead at 28 minutes for ANX. This absolutely destroyed CLG here. It's a slaughter, and they're getting poke onto Stixay at the start of every fight, which is preventing the one true damage dealer CLG have right now 
from participating. They poke everyone down incredibly low and just take two turrets at once. Whew. It is definitely going to be a miracle if CLG can come back from this one. They have been able to pull off miracles before, but they also do not have a good team fighting composition with nobody really able to play that front line. So yeah. it would have to also come from an unforced error from ANX that CLG would be able to punish. Well, I don't think it's likely. Albus Knox have shown so much class across the four games here at Worlds. Who he's gonna root Smurf down does literally no damage. <laughs> Smurf's buckler blocks everything. Definitely. The uh, yeah. Athene's Ardent Sensor, not the damage dealing karma build. Yeah, and that allows Smurf to go Thorn Mail Ninja Tabi. They're not going to be able to do damage to him because they don't have a true mage right now with that supportive build, and they're stacking the everywhere else. They also see a cocoon. Culling comes up, but Stick says running low. Three minutes. It's Albus Knox Luna with a miracle, and he's looking for more. Smurf gets a kill. CLG are rooted. They're running for their lives. The third inhibitor of the game is falling and Albus Knox Luna now have super minions they've set their targets on the Nexus turrets and I don't think CLG can defend this one Albus Knox from the CIS from the LCL they are doing what no wildcard team has done before Albus Knox Luna have got one giant foot in the door to Chicago on the oh. way to the quarterfinals and this was their most impressive win by a wide margin. This was a 30-minute stop of CLG. A historic victory here for Albus Knox. Very, very impressive. Standard composition, punishing mistakes over and over. Yeah, we talked about the things the teams would do to adapt to Albus Knox. Block their brand, block the Anivia. Don't let them sneak Baron. CLG did those things, but they didn't even come close to preventing them from winning this game. That's fantastic sportsmanship there as Lecrit and a miracle give Aframu a hug. Ladies and gentlemen, in Group A, tied for first place with the Rocks Tigers is Albus Knox Luna at three wins and one loss. And the crowd